Okay, on to our third video for our markdown. How to use it, what it is, what's it good for. All right, we had a pretty good working R Markdown document in the previous video, but I want to add a couple of bells and whistles to it that I think make R Markdown look much nicer than just the default settings. So we're back to this header information. Title and author, I think, are obvious. The date, I think, is obvious. Now the output information, you'll notice between this and the previous video, I've added a bunch. Um, I like my outputs to be HTML mostly because it's flexible that you can open it in any browser and basically any device and it looks pretty good basically everywhere. But I've added several things. The theme is the color scheme you're going to have in the HTML document. The highlighting is the type of code highlighting you see. So when you do display your code, is it just generic gray or black text? Or does it actually show you, hey, this is a function and this is a variable and other things? Um, table of Contents, TOC. I like to have my Table of Contents show up, and I like to have it float on the top left-hand side of my document. We'll see that in a minute. I want it to number the section sometimes, sometimes I don't. Let's change that back to true just for the, the time being. And then code folding I'll explain in just a minute. So I'm going to just knit this document. So again, I could do it with the mouse and click that button, or on the Mac, Command Shift K on the Windows is probably Control Shift K. I'm going to knit this document up. I've added a couple of sections to what we had before, but basically it's still the same document. I don't have a whole lot different. Now I'm going to pull this into um, Chrome, so it's just a, a web page. Now I still have my title, I've got my name, first section, and notice that the sections are numbered. I used a single hashtag for the section header. The double hashtag, let's come back over here, there's a double hashtag before include plots, and notice that's a subsection, and notice that as I scroll into that subsection, my table of contents that's floating around up here expanded to show me, hey, there's a subsection for you. If I go down to some other subsection, it hides that, come into that section, I can go into the subsection and I can keep scrolling. So that's actually really nice. That's a nice way to organize your documents. If this is a homework assignment that you're turning in, this could be first problem, second problem, third problem, fourth problem, and then the subparts could be part A, part B, part C, etc. One other thing I want to show you is this code folding bit here. I said code folding is hide, and notice that there's no code showing but there's this nice little button here that says code. And if I click it, it actually shows me the code that generated that little piece of the document. So over here in my document, I had echo equals true. So I told our markdown, hey, I want the user to be able to see this code, suppress all the warnings, all that stuff. But when I have the code folding, I have the code hidden unless you really want to see it. And then at the very top there's a button that says show all code or hide all code. So if I want to go through and check everything, well there's only one code block this time. If I wanted to go through and check everything, I could show all the code and go look at it. Most of the time I want that everything to be hidden and then only if I'm curious am I going to come in here and actually look to see what your code is. This is good data communication. Most of the time you don't want to show people your code because it takes a long time to write for you and a long time for the reader to try and parse. And that's really not what you want them to be doing. You want them to be reading your paragraph, looking at the plots that are supporting what you're saying in the paragraph, and trying to understand the statistics that you did. They don't need to spend their time worrying about why there's a comma here or a semicolon there or an equal sign there. That's not what the reader should be spending their time doing. That's what you spend your time doing so that the communication is clear. So I think these couple of headers that I use um, are a really nice way to make your R Markdown documents look good. Now the themes and the highlights I'm going to go back into Chrome here. If you go to the R Markdown page, so I'm just at rmarkdown.rstudio.com, um, 
There's a lot of things that you can go through here. Get formats, go to galleries, look around and see what it is that other people have done, that other people have built. Use those to make your R Markdown look nice, but don't do so in such a way that it's distracting. Last thing I want to show you in this video is remember that in our studio, if you go to Help and Cheat Sheets, there's a bunch of cheat sheets you can do here, and R Markdown is one of them. So I have that guy open. The R Markdown Cheat Sheet has all sorts of things about how to use R Markdown. The thing that I like the best is it shows you how to do italics, how to do bold, headers, how to do inline equations. For those of you that know LaTeX, R Markdown understands the LaTeX typesetting language. So when you want to type math, just type it in LaTeX just like you always would. R Markdown gets it, including images, and then the output of all those things is on the right-hand side here. So this part of the cheat sheet is the part I like the best because I don't always remember how to do bullets or itemized lists or headers or whatever. I actually literally keep this cheat sheet on my desk. So the next R Markdown video will talk through a few more details. Um, but we're getting close. Hopefully you understand what our markdown is and what it does at this point.